Greetings, Earthlings. Scott Johnson here. I'm outside. Nature, you know? Sometimes you just need to hang around it, be in it. After all, what are we human beings, if not natural beings, right? We are the result of a long history of, uh, <laughs> you know, evolution and creatures that turned into us, I suppose, over time. And here we are, you know, top of the food chain. If we need to go get a deer, well, we can do it, you know. You need me to milk a cow? Guess what, cow? You got little choice. Never seen a cow stand up to a man and say, you know, you're not, you stay off these teats. These are mine. <laughs> All right. Anyway, hey, everybody. It's uh, The Diary, and uh, we're here once again. I was going to put a little more space between me and that episode that I did regarding Fury Road, or uh, Furiosa. That guy's got a muffler problem. But I decided that, uh, you know, no time like the present. This morning at 7.30 a.m. or so, Kim got up, started packing. I guess 7, whatever it was. And by the time we started film sack at 9 o'clock, she was heading out the door. Where? Well, two weeks she's away. She is with her sister in Oregon, and they're going to be driving. Well, two, so her and another sister from Mississippi both flew up here. Well, sorry, let me back this up. Her sister Sarah flew here last night. Her and Kim flew out this morning together to go straight to Oregon. Some little town, I always forget the name of. And then from there, they hop on uh, or hop in a car and they drive all the way down to central Mississippi. And they do that to take the other sister to her new house uh, and stuff like that. And if you've been paying attention to some of the traumatic events around our extended family in the last couple of years, this is the sister whose husband was shot to death by cops standing out on his porch because they mistook him for somebody they were trying to chase that night. And he just happened to walk out and go, what's going on? You know, like on his own, his own deck back there. And uh, they shot him like 10 times or something. I don't remember now. Anyway, of course, that killed him, and it was horrendous, and the entire family was pretty shook by all this. And then a friend of theirs said, you know, we're going to get a lawyer set up because you, you, this is wrongful death, and you should be suing the state and the city for this. At the least, at the very least, the department. And they did, and she won. And I'm really glad she won because she deserves it. Nobody should have to go through that. It was completely uh, the cop's fault. And uh, she got a sizable settlement out of this deal. Could have maybe gone for more, but she, not, she wasn't in it for the money. She was obviously, I mean, nobody is. She's in it because her life got turned upside down. And um, anyway, so they're helping her move. They're driving across country, hopping in her car, her new car. She got a new car as well. They're going to drive down to Mississippi to her new house that she also picked up. Brand new, beautiful house out by a lake. It's just her and her dog. And uh, I'm very, very happy for her that she's uh, at this place now, at this stage, you know. Um, but as a result, it's just me and Carter and, um, you know, chilling, living the dream. <laughs> What's crazy is the last four or five days leading up to Kim leaving, it was raining every day. And yesterday it was no exception. It just big cloud bursts of rain. And suddenly today it is clear and gorgeous. 66 working on 72 today, sunny, a little bit of a breeze. Oh man. And that's where I'm at. I'm in the sun right now. I'm sitting on an Anirondack chair. 
and I'm talking to you. Um, a major thing happened today, or I made a decision that I've been working on for a while. Sorry, my head itches, and you probably hear me scratching it. I've decided to wean myself away from Twitter, finally, and, and for real. And while I never say never, who knows, you know, it changes hands again or it gets better or something. I don't know what happens to t Twitter to make it so it's attractive to me again. But right now, it's just a misery pile. I hate being there. My, my um, interactions are down, way, way, way down, and have been since the whole blue check changeover thing. And I have a theory about that that a few other former blue checks uh, agree with, and I don't have a way to prove this out because I don't, I don't know anybody that works at Twitter, but when I was verified before uh, and that went away, my engagement went from just fine and normal to zero, almost. Not zero, but, you know, way low. And... Um, I mean, the only explanation for it is the change. What else could it be? And other friends I had who were also previously verified who uh, didn't want to pay up to be verified again all say the same thing. They're just like, something happened that day. And I think that former blue checks, when back when blue checks were just, you know, verified people and not part of Twitter Blue or whatever. Um, I think those... Oh, hi, Ripley. Hi. Don't touch this. This is my phone. I think that those people also got, not shadow banned, but whatever the equivalent of just sort of pushed off to the corner. Are you already done? Mm -hmm. How'd it go? What do you mean? <laughs> Carter's playing um, Fallout New Vegas on stream today. What was wrong? No. Does this stress you out? A little bit. Just having people watch you? It's different than just playing for fun. But it's also different than playing with someone. Yeah. On stream. That's true. Being alone is weird. Yeah, being alone is weird. I'm like people who, who stream by themselves, I think the trick is they have to get to a place where they don't even think about it. It's just like, I'm just playing. Yeah. And if I comment, it's because somebody asked a question and, and you don't. You just treat it like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. Like, I don't know. It's hard to explain. I don't do it well either. Yeah. I don't like the feeling of it. It's stressful. It's stressful, but it's also like, I don't know. Why am I playing? Or why do, does anyone actually care? Like, I don't know. I get, that's, yeah, that's more it. It's a weird thing. So I feel you. Anyway, I was just telling the people that uh, I'm going to step away from Twitter, I think. Finally. Yeah. It's a little tricky. Just delete it. I did. It's not on my phone now. Um, and I took the bookmark off my desktop. And it's not for any particular thing that happened today. It wasn't like, oh, the, that straw finally broke the camel's back. Can't brip, brip, brip. It's been a long time of just like, it's just, I'm not happy there. I want to go do stuff where I'm happy and enjoying it and What's the point of this if you're not enjoying it? You know, part of me, there's this voice in the back of my head that goes, well, Scott, it's a, you got to be, the, you got to be on all the platforms. How else are you going to, this part of your work, this part of your business. If you're not everywhere, then how are those fans? And I think it's, I think that's a mirage. Yeah. No, because that you may get the feeling that you're having these interactions. You may get the feeling that that's somehow growing over there. That part never grew my stuff. Everything grew, and that was just a side thing. That was just a place where, oh, you like the shows, you follow my art, you do this, you do that, but you're also on Twitter? Cool. It was never, Twitter is the gateway to your content. It's never been that. And it hit me today. I went, that's a mirage. That's a thing people tell each other to feel good about staying somewhere that sucks. Yep. And it makes you feel like shiz the whole time you're there. So I'm... I think I'm done. You want to know why I deleted it? Why? Because my phone was running out of space. Oh, you're right. Wait. Oh, because you needed just room and there was an ad, that app took space? Yep. Well. And I was like, I'm never on it. I don't care anymore. That's one reason, I suppose. I mean, you have to admit, though, I got 50-something thousand people on there. It's hard to just say no to that, but I don't know how much of that is even real anymore. How many of our inactive accounts now because they left? Because they don't like the changes. Or how many of those are bots or always were bots? 
I don't freaking know. They don't tell me. Yeah. How do I know? It's all garbage. It's garbage poo poo. And it's not like there aren't people on there that I like. Of course there are. And there's some that are still there, and that's fine. I'm not telling anyone else what to do at all. This is not me doing that. But I need what I need is a world where what I make, what I create, is just as important without a single channel of verification. I don't need... Twitter shouldn't be this, like, litmus test of, is what you're up to any good? Well, how do you know? Well, I got a lot of followers on Twitter. It doesn't, it's just fake clout. Yeah. And I don't, if I'm, you know, I always talk about how at this stage of my life, I'm seeking more authenticity than ever before. It's what makes me happier. It's what I, I recognize it when I see, when I see people not having it and I don't, I want to be away from them. I want authentic things. I want authentic people, authentic experiences, authentic emotions. I don't want anything else. I don't want the fakery that is most people's lives where, oh yeah, just that whole, you know what I'm saying? Just that whole, everybody's being real careful about it. I just want it to be what it is. What is the truth? What is life? Who are we? What's my relationship with somebody? And Twitter gave a false sense of, I don't even know what. Well, it did used to be better. 100% it used to be better. It used to be positive interactions and more of them. Yep. Now we just don't get anything. And I'm not even saying, I don't know if I've been shadow banned. Maybe me and other former blue check people before that all changed have a feeling we, we, that that category got pushed away. More than just like, say, a new sign-up guy who doesn't sub either. But I just don't like this feeling of like, well, if you sub, maybe you get back. No. Yeah, it, feels like it feels gross. I don't even care about the price is not important. That's Ripley, not it. No. Ripley, quit licking your butthole. Ripley, gross. Why is it dripping? She's That's She's disgusting. Yeah, it is. The dog's licking her butt and then drooling at the same time. That tells me a thing I don't want to repeat. All right. She likes her own butthole is what I'm saying. She's just drooly and disgusting. She thinks there's a steak dinner back there. Yeah. Stop. <laughs> anyway. So I'm weaning. It's not going to be easy because I admit it. I'm a little. I'm kind of hooked on the the loop of it. Well, the loop's not even there anymore. No, that's what's remind. That's that's what's brought this upon me. Is like I don't even have the illusion of the loop anymore. It's just not there. Yep. And today I just had nasty people come into conversations and be jerks. Well, okay. Well, and why am I? Why? And they were all dumb stuff. Like, oh, I don't want to get into it. Just ignore it all. This is my point. Who cares anymore? So I'm, post, I'm going to post in other things. But here's, there's a two-forked plan here. One, no more Twitter. Cutting way back, if, if, if not completely. Be off Twitter. I know, but i got to wean a little. You don't. Really don't. I'm going to reply to people who have real questions about why I'm doing this. Oh, I'm going to do that. Tell them something else. Huh? Tell them to get on something else. I did. But they don't, you can't make people go other places. Yeah, but you can then just quit. I know. Anyway, I'm still going to post in other places, but I'm going to be less... I already am less invested in their main feeds anyway, so I don't care. So if I have interactions on... I get way more interactions on threads anyway. Just way more conversations and fan stuff. So I'll do that. I'll go where that is. Those are the platforms I want. The ones where the people who like me, want to support me, follow my shiz, I can have those conversations. Mm -hmm. Discord is probably the best place for it right now. Although somebody was saying the other day, Discord's kind of a problem. Because it, it supplanted all forum, like forums. But forums had one advantage, and that was it had like kind of a permanent record, exportable history, yeah. all that. This doesn't really. Discord has like just a drop in, say it's very ephemeral. And I actually, I've thought about that a lot. I actually think I prefer that ephemeralness. I don't need a permanent record, and I don't need. It's not like there's some, you know, Alex, a library of Alexandria worthy content to keep forever in there it's mostly just communication tools and quick backs and forths and also you can't control what a forum owner which always comes down to one person you can't control what they do with the data anyway they just chuck it 
or keep it or don't or have it auto delete from the database 30 days every 30 days like I don't have control over that anyway so it's kind of this myth that you even have that control anyway I don't know why this is a big deal for me but I'm finally I'm making the cut please stop messing with my onions I'm not I'm not messing with your onions that's a stick because it was here in the onions and I'm just doing this with it. I'm not touching your onions. Were you even listening to me before? Yeah, I was fully listening. You're w more worried about your onions than you are your father's I thoughts. Huh? I noticed you messing <laughs> How do you feel that mom's gone? Think we're going to be all right? Yeah. Two weeks. Fine. Two weeks. That's like that movie. Total recall. Two weeks. How long are you going to be here? Two weeks. Has your luggage been with you all this time? Two. You've, you've not seen that? Carter. Once again, I've failed. I haven't seen anything. I'm making you and Alicia watch the Planet of the Apes make uh, new ones. You've seen the first one, but you haven't seen the second two. And the second two are so good. First Planet? Huh? Planet of the Apes? Planet of the Apes. Yeah. The new ones. Yeah. They're so good. I want to see that new, new one in theaters. New, new. New, new. Snoo snoo. Snoo snoo. <laughs> anyway, so that's all I really uh, came on the diary to talk about today. What do you think, Ripley? You have any thoughts? Are you too busy? It's either a butthole lick or what's that bird? Those are your two emotions right now. Sometimes she eats bees. She does eat bees. Has she ever eaten a bee and gotten stung? I don't think so. Well, we got a wasp nest up there. I think I'm going to spray it. You better not be home when I do it because you get sad. All right? Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? You get anaphylactic shock. <laughs> I am not allergic to bee stings. You get enough of them and you will be. Well, that's not allergic. That's just too much bee venom or whatever. Yeah. I, don't, I think everyone has that. What? The bee sting? <laughs> well, yeah, it'll hurt. But if I get stung by a bee... Or even a handful of bees. Ten bees all one. I'd be fine. I don't know. You ever seen the movie um, My Girl with Macaulay Culkin and uh, I don't remember the girl's name. She was in Veep. She's all grown up now. Anyway, in My Girl, um, Macaulay Culkin from Home Alone fame is out in the yard goofing around. I don't remember what the hell was going on. Somebody was throwing a baseball, I think, at the steps. And underneath these wooden steps, they were kind of covered back underneath it, was a big old wasp hive. And then he didn't know it. And they come pouring out of there and sting him to death. It kills the kid. I know. Home Alone 5, the day the bees won. It's really bad. This is a sad movie. Um, Dan Aykroyd was the girl's dad, which I love. And there was one other thing that was cool about that movie. I don't remember now. My girl. I think it was my girl. Monday show. Oh yeah, we're already. This is kind of. Well, you're the one who came out here. I just want to be the sun. <laughs> you like save it. Look how happy Ripley looks. Is that a smile or is that? I must breathe in so that I can lick my butthole again later. Ripley, you okay? Are you okay? Well, anyway, Alicia's still here? Mm -hmm. She's just so. in her room? I don't know. She does that on Sunday. She just chills. I don't blame her. I have no idea. She's in there, not venting. What's the word? Decompressing. Decompressing. When I walk by, I can hear her go, shh. <laughs> Decompressing. Decompression in progress. Please step away. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for today. Those are just some quick thoughts. Goodbye, Twitter. And hello, less Twitter. I don't know. I don't want to be a butt about it. Be a butt about it. Who cares? People think they care. I'm a butt about it. Twitter sucks. Twitter does suck. And there's X, a lot of reasons. X sucks. Yeah, X sucks. X. X. You know what sucks, too? There's a ton of songs, rap music, movies, TV shows. Websites. Where they just freely say Twitter all the time. And now it sounds stupid because it, it is the dumbest rebranding in the history. That's not why I left, by the way. No, I know. 
if it was a perfectly f fun, great place to be, I'm not. I don't have a care in the world about that. But the rebrand re rebrand is dumb on its own. I was trying to think of the dumbest rebrands. I think that counts. Coke Classic and New Coke that counts. You weren't around them, but yeah. when Joe I was a kid, Siwa. what Jojo Siwa? Yeah. What the hell? Oh, her her new hard edged. Uh, yeah, whatever, dude. Bad. Her first brand sucked. <laughs> I told you I know someone who who directed her in commercials, and he said it was the most miserable experience he'd ever had at, the, at that point. He'd never had a worse experience than working with her. She was a nightmare to work with. Sorry. I'm not saying names. I'm not outing anybody. What do you think, Ripley? Should I say names? I want to be a dog. All I'd have to worry about is not I'm like licking your butt, panting in the sun, big free full of, a full bowl of food at the end of the day, or full of food. Full of food. And look at that. Look at her. Just laying there, soaking it in. Everyone loves you, wants to pet you and hug you and play, you know? What a life. Humans. As long as you're in a good situation. I mean, they only do it for 14 years, which kind of sucks, or at the most. Yeah. Some dogs have rough lives. Yeah. Well, it's because we've overbred them. That's our fault. Also, some people are mean to them. Yeah, that's true. Pretty sure somebody was mean to uh, Rainer before we got her. I'm pretty sure someone was mean to you think so? Who could be mean to her? Yeah. Look at her. Is that why she gets weird at night? Yeah. She gets very, uh, what's the word? You got a word for this. When she gets up, or when she's like that at night, where she's just night aggression. Yeah, she's got like sleep aggression. Sleep and night aggression. Sometimes she'll come out of a, out of a, like a nap, just barking. But she wouldn't hurt a flea. She's very sweet. She's very sweet. Yeah. She's also loud. <laughs> She's very loud. Anyway, we hope you're having a good weekend, and uh, I guess it's almost over. Tomorrow's Monday, so get ready for the hot new world of tomorrow. Today. Okay? Oh, my phone is hot. It's not good. Right, I'll see you guys later. Oh, call me with your feedback. 801-471-0462. Uh, text me there or voicemail me. Either way, I'll get it. See you later. Bye. <laughs>